Last year, I was feeling bored and lonely due to the pandemic, so I downloaded Tinder. Although I had used the app once before and met some decent people, there was nothing exceptional about those experiences. However, during my last use of Tinder, which also happens to be my last time using any dating app, I connected with a blonde girl named Haley. At first, she seemed like a good match, which is why I agreed to meet up with her. I thought she was cute, and I was eager to form a connection with someone. We hit it off, so we decided to meet in person. However, things quickly went south, and Haley's behavior became erratic and alarming. This experience made me realize that the horror stories about people meeting strangers from the internet are more common than we think. Despite assuming that it couldn't happen to me, it did. From now on, I prefer to meet people in person by going out to eat or watching a movie together. However, she insisted on coming to my house instead. I made up an excuse about why we couldn't hang out there, mainly because my house was a mess, and I also wanted to get out of the house myself. Despite this, she very bluntly explained that we couldn't hang out unless it was at my place. In hindsight, I should have seen this as a red flag, but I didn't pay enough attention to it. She was really pretty, and I was lonely, and I think she used that to her advantage because she knew it too. Eventually, I caved in and agreed to let her come over. We set up a time, which gave me just enough time to clean the house and get myself ready. When she texted me upon arrival, I let her in, but things were extremely awkward at first. Right away, I noticed that she looked different from the picture on her Tinder account, but I didn't say anything about it because I didn't want to be rude. I'm not particularly attractive myself, so I let it go and we started chatting. For the most part, things were going okay. She asked if I had any alcohol, and I mentioned having a half bottle of Jameson in the cupboard. When I returned from the restroom, she was sitting on the couch with a drink in hand. She had prepared one for me too, which was on my glass coffee table. I wasn't really interested in alcohol, especially not liquor, so I grabbed a beer from my fridge instead. However, after three or four beers, I ended up drinking the mixed drink she kept pressuring me to have. I almost decided against it because of how much she wanted me to drink it and I even had a paranoid thought that she could have spiked it while I was in the bathroom. However, I eventually let it go, thinking she seemed nice, we were getting along, and there didn't seem to be anything in my drink. I drank it, and for about 10 or 20 minutes, I didn't feel different. I played it off as me just being drunk and overthinking things. After all, I was a lightweight, and a few drinks were enough to mess me up. However, Things started to get really weird from there. The last thing I recall was sitting on the couch, feeling dizzy and faint, until I eventually blacked out. I must have been unconscious for at least five hours, because I woke up at dawn and was horrified by what I discovered. I found myself lying on the floor of my bedroom, in a state of terror. As I slowly regained consciousness, I realized that something was seriously wrong. I still felt the effects of the drug she had slipped me, and my entire body was in pain, from my neck down to my arms, back, and stomach. I had bruises all over my body, as well as over five deep, stab-like puncture wounds and cuts on both my arms and stomach. As I got up, I noticed that my bed and floor were soaked in blood, and the walls were stained as well. I nearly fainted again at the sight, and felt like I couldn't breathe. I tried to call the police, but my phone was missing, and I soon realized that she had stolen it along with my four TVs, some jewelry, and a few of my safes, which contained over $20,000. The whole situation was a nightmare. When I returned home, no one was in sight, but my house was a disaster. The windows were destroyed, and nearly every room was vandalized. She had completely demolished everything. I looked in the mirror and had a breakdown. It was hard to believe any of it was real. I'm almost certain that someone else was involved besides the girl I met. It's difficult to even type this out, but I had a disturbing wound on my stomach, and they used my blood to draw a pentagram on the wall in my bedroom. I found one of my old phones in a dresser, connected it to Wi-Fi, 
and called a friend on FaceTime audio to tell them to call the police. I waited for them to arrive, which took about 20 minutes. I don't know what she drugged me with, but it was reported as a rare and extremely powerful tranquilizer. I gave the police all the information I could, including trying to show them my Tinder account on the old phone, but the account was deleted and it probably wouldn't have helped much since I was likely catfished. The people who did this were never caught. I moved to a new house a few months ago, and I no longer live in fear. I installed security cameras and an ADT security alarm system, which I recommend everyone to have if possible. It could save your life. A few years ago, I made a foolish decision that led me into a horrific and barbaric situation with someone who I suspect may be a serial killer or worse. I was 18 at the time, a 21-year-old girl now, just out of high school, and bored with my summer vacation in mid-August. My father and I lived alone, and he was overly protective, which led to emotional and psychological abuse. He never allowed me to have friends and made me stay home every day to do chores, treating me like his personal servant. He even removed my bedroom door, leaving me feeling powerless and deprived of privacy until he gave me a phone a month before this incident. He usually took it away at 8 p.m. every night, but he was too drunk that night and forgot or thought I was asleep, so he didn't bother. Using Tinder, which I had on my phone, became my escape to meet new people and socialize since I had been isolated for years and bullied in school. I never really had the chance to make good friends. Most kids either pretended to be my friend or harassed me, making my life miserable. I had been chatting with a man named Alex on Tinder for just over a day, and our connection progressed quickly. However, I had to be cautious because my father would check my phone every night so I deleted anything that he would disapprove of, including Tinder. If he found out that I was using the app, he would have been furious. Alex was 28 years old, and his age made him attractive to me, which boosted my confidence. However, in retrospect, I realized that it was kind of creepy for him to talk to someone my age. I shared my difficult home situation with him, and he suggested that I could move in with him. He reminded me that I was an adult and no longer legally bound to follow my father's rules. Although I was thrilled at the prospect, I was also apprehensive. Alex offered to pick me up that night and told me to pack my things. I explained that I wasn't ready for that yet and suggested we hang out first. He agreed and promised to pick me up at midnight. I told him that I needed to be back home by 4 a.m. and he said that was fine. I had warned Alex not to drive down my driveway and to park on the side of the road instead. I asked him to text me when he arrived, and I would come out to meet him. My dad's house had a long driveway, and I was afraid my dad would hear Alex pulling up and wake up, so I thought it would be safer for us if he parked further away. Alex then told me that he preferred to talk over text and asked for my number. I gave it to him but told him not to text me after 8 o'clock on any other normal night unless prompted otherwise because of my dad. He agreed. Sure enough, Alex showed up about 5 minutes past 12 o'clock and texted me as I had asked him to. I replied that I would be out in just a few minutes. I snuck out of my window and started making my way down the driveway. However, I didn't see any sign of Alex. My dad's driveway was long and lined with trees on both sides, all the way down to the end of the road by the mailbox. I found it weird that I didn't see any lights from Alex's car, but I thought that he might have turned it off to be less conspicuous, knowing about my dad. As I was walking down the driveway, about halfway to the road, I started hearing some whispering. After observing the situation for a moment, I heard a burst of laughter from a man followed by more whispers. As I started walking again, I quietly made my way within 20 feet of what I assumed was Alex. I could hear him speaking on the phone, but there was no response from the other end. Although eavesdropping isn't something I would normally do, the circumstances made me very cautious. As it turned out, my caution was justified. 
I overheard Alex boasting to the person on the other end of the phone about how he planned to rape me and keep me alive for as long as possible. The statement was so sickening and disturbing that I almost vomited. Apparently, I made some noise because Alex suddenly went quiet. I considered running back to the house, but I thought hiding was a better option. I retraced my steps towards the house and took a sharp right turn into the woods where I knew of a safe hiding spot. After about five minutes of silence, I received a text from Alex asking where I was. I ignored it and turned off my ringer. However, he started bombarding my phone with messages and calls until I finally answered after the fifth attempt. I decided to make an excuse and lie about why I couldn't come out that night, but he saw through it and started getting angry, trying to make me feel guilty about wasting his time. That's when he showed his true colors, cussing me out and saying terrible things about me. He then said something that scared me to my core. I know where you live. Just remember that. I hope you sleep tight, honey. I'll see you soon. He hung up, and I heard his car speed off. I hoped it was the last I would hear from him, but I was too scared to be sure. I lay awake in bed all night, terrified that he would come back and hurt me. The very next morning, I blocked him on Tinder and from my phone number. Then, while my dad was at work, I confided in my grandmother about what had happened. I told her everything, including how my dad had been treating me horribly for my whole life. She had always known that he was a terrible person, but she had no idea of the extent of the abuse I had suffered at home. After I told her everything, she came and picked me up. We decided not to tell my dad anything about what had happened. For the longest time, I had been too scared to tell anyone about the abuse, but confiding in my grandmother was the best decision I ever made. Since then, I have been much happier, and I am now working on getting my own place with my girlfriend. Every day, I am healing and getting better. I tried to contact the police, but they said they couldn't do anything without proof. So, unfortunately, it is very likely that Alex, if that is even his real name, is still out there hurting others. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and sharing it to support me. The best is yet to come.